You know, I give a lot of credit to Kansas State. They made some big plays down the stretch. They made some big plays early, but I've been part of a lot of big wins and I've been part of a lot of tough losses. Never been prouder of a team because we didn't have our game tonight. We did not play like uh, we were the first half. It was just kind of we we're ham and egging it and we were just kind of fighting through it. And, you know, we just kept fighting when they, you know, those two shot clock threes they hit, one was a bank in from almost on the ground and and then we missed some free throws some of our better guys I mean it just wasn't they made some plays and we did some strange things but uh, we played our butt off uh, to bounce back after what we were shooting and shoot almost 50 percent from the field and I guess it was 50 uh, two from the three 82 from the line out rebounded them the game was lost with these 16 points of turnovers they got compared to our twos, turnovers was one thing we were concerned with. And then uh, those timely shots they hit. And uh, But these guys battled back. Um, Ty was struggling early. Joey was hot. AJ was just in the middle of it. AJ really came along late. Then Ty did. Then Joey did. And uh, I just... I'm proud of them. I'm really proud of them. And I don't say that about a lot of teams, but uh, what they've done in the last couple of weeks, how they've grown, um, I give a lot of credit to Kansas State, but uh, boy, they, it was their night with some of those shots that went in. So that's it. Once again, we'll start with questions for the student athletes. Just give, please raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone over to you. Give name and affiliation before asking your question. <clears throat> Do we have any? Okay, up here in the front, to my left. Bob Wanowski, Detroit News. Uh, Tyson, the, the final play there, can you describe what happened as you were going up and I guess Noel's hand came in? Can you describe it? Uh, they, they knew we needed a three to tie the game up and they just played it really well. Uh, they switched and uh, they just got it through Pilon well. Uh, he made a good play. And, I, and none of us could get a clean look, and they, they got to stop. We're going to be on the aisle here, up here in the second row. Go ahead. Uh, Brennan Shabath, WDBM Sports. This question's for Joey. Uh, what was the conversation in the huddle before that last offensive possession? Were you guys expecting them to foul, being up by three? Uh, was the, ch the plan to get a shot early, later? You know, what was the plan there? We knew we needed a three. Um, we, we executed the, the play pretty well. Had a good look at it, pass it up, um, and then after that, you know, it's tough to get a good look at it after that. But yeah, I and mean, just think it, think it shot off. Questions for the student athlete? Okay, on the aisle, on the other side, in the back. Go ahead, Tom Arian with AP Radio. For the players, can you put into words the disappointment of having come so close, losing, losing in overtime? here in the third round. Why don't we start with AJ, then we'll go Joey, then we'll go Tyson. So, AJ? Uh, you know, super disappointing. Uh, we wanted to win. We were so close to our goal. And uh, just proud of my guys. Um, we just couldn't figure out a way to close the game tonight. And uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, it just sucks right now. Um, but everybody played their butts off. So, you know, you can't hang your head. Uh. You know, I uh, wish we'd be having practice tomorrow, but we don't. So uh, we, we played hard. Uh, you know, we, we put some games together. And, you know, just you can't, can't be mad about it. Any more questions for student athletes? OK. We'll start in the back to my left, and then we'll come over to that side. Eric Jackson with Sportico. This is for the guys, uh, AJ. There's been a lot of talk about the new Wilson basketball this postseason. I'm curious your thoughts on, you know, it being a little too bouncy. I'm curious your thoughts on if it played a factor in tonight's result. Both teams had to play the same ball. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go across the room, uh, like second row on the end. Yep. Matt sure on the Detroit News. Um, this is for any of you guys. When, when they're making some of those shots that Tom referenced, whether it's the banked in one or – the deep contested threes. How tough is it to kind of overcome those uh, just as a team in general, not let those kind of overtake and kind of beat you guys down in those moments? Why don't we start with Tyson, then we'll go Joey, and then we'll go AJ. Uh, the, the game 
It's the game of runs. Uh, people make shots. Uh, just got to respond. Uh, it wasn't the first time we seen people make shots, uh, and then we came down and made shots. So it wasn't like uh, we didn't shoot it well today. We, we shot it really well. Uh, we, we just didn't get stops. That, that's really it. Yeah, both teams made plays. Um, they just happened to make a couple more at the end of the game. This time of year is about who's going to make the plays at the right time. Uh, we didn't get the stops that we needed when we needed them, and uh, they made and they capitalized off of them. Stay in that same row in the middle. AJ, on great season. First of all, congratulations on that. Jim Comproni, SpartanMag.com. AJ, uh, later portions of the game, you started going to the rim. What did you see, and you were able to finish some some big shots downhill? What did you see that that kind of ignited that? Um, you know, they were just staying tight to my shooters, and I was just being aggressive. Um, just doing what I could do to help us win the game. Um, just trying to put my best foot forward. And uh, I made plays, but I didn't, didn't make enough for us to win. We'll go other side of the room here, row five. Go ahead. Thank you. Jeff Maglichetti with uh, SI.com Foundation All Knicks. Sorry it didn't go your guys' way tonight. My question for, is for each of the players. As upperclassmen, how hopeful and excited are you for the future of Michigan State basketball? And what can a run like this, one where you guys take down a number two seat and a favorite in Marquette, what can a run, tournament run like this do for the program in the future and help build momentum towards something even greater? Why don't we go AJ first, then Tyson, then Joey? I mean, um... When you come to Michigan State, you're supposed to do things like this. Um, I'm just just so happy I could deal with this group of guys. Um, There's definitely hope around the corner, but uh, just right now, just things to even think about the future. Uh, you know, uh, coach is coach. Uh, you know, he, he makes runs. He's got a good group of guys coming in, uh, good guys still here. Uh, and, and I won't be surprised. He does it again, Even goes even further. Yeah, same thing. Um, you know, coach is coach. Like, he, he knows how to win these games, and I'm glad that um, we got a little bit of a taste of it. Um, but these guys got an incredible team coming back next year, so um, definitely, you know, they'll, they'll try to make a run and get even farther. We will dismiss the student athletes at this time. Michigan State locker room is still open for another seven minutes. It's now 941. It'll be open until 948. At this time, we'll take questions for Coach Izzo. Once again, just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. We have questions for Coach. We will start up here in front. Bob Wanowski, Detroit News. Tom, I don't know how many games you've been through like this where you guys are hitting shots and they're hitting shots and they're coming from everywhere. What were you thinking it was at, as that was unfolding? Just get one stop or just yeah. what was in your mind? Yeah, at the end, one stop, you know, in that first half when they, you know, those two shot clock ones were real killers, and whoever asked the question, it does break your back, you know, you you think you play pretty good D, a loose ball, I mean, he comes flying in and banks it, I mean, and you say, well, it's just one shot, but, you know, I talked to my team in the at the hotel before we left, and uh, you try to talk about the importance of one shot, one turnover, one free throw, you know, and and you can't uh, harp on them because then guys get nervous and uptight, but they're the difference in winning and losing, you know. It's just the way it is. It's it's the sport we're in. It's the, it's the my bad's got to go away. And we made some, some plays that weren't right, but the way those shots went in, and we made some big shots too, but, boy, they hit a couple. The Mashad kid, you know, hit a couple of bombs and – but those, those at least were good shots. The uh, fall down end of the shot clock ones, um, you kind of start thinking it's not your night. And, uh, and then when Joey goes to the line and misses the front end of a one-on-one, he's a 91% free throw shooter. You know, those are tough things to overcome, and yet it's sure as hell not their fault. I was proud of AJ, the way he stepped up. I thought, I thought Tyson felt a little pressure um, being home and he just wasn't the same early, but he bounced back and that yeah, was fun to watch. It must have been a hell of a game for TV, a hell of a game for the fans. I think it, you know, for me, I play for the Big Ten too. Um, it's really important to me when you've been in a league 40 years that you love and cherish and you know how good it is and we can't get that 
another national championship. Uh, even that stuff's on my mind because um, I know how good my league is and I know how good the teams are and the coaches are. And yet it never looks good when you don't have a team moving on th through the Sweet 16. We'll stay in this row. A couple seats over, Jack. Jack Ebling, uh, Spotlight Radio Network and Fox 47. Tom, uh, Judd always used to say more games are lost than won. Is it fair to say that this was a game that Kansas State won, not one that Michigan State lost? Yeah, you know, when, when you have 16 to 2 points off turnovers, you got to give us a little bit of blame and little, give them a little bit of credit. But I, I would agree with that. I mean, I, I sure as hell am proud of my team, um, even with stuff like that. Uh, they just made some incredible shots. And... Uh, and, you know, we made some good plays. We just, I guess we couldn't stop them. And I, I'm sitting there looking at the stats. And I'm talking about how good they were. You know, they shot 55%, but I think they had, including the layup at the end, I think they had about six laps off of turnovers. They shot 45 from the three, and we thought they made every shot. We shot 52. They shot 68 from the line. We shot 82. We out-rebounded them by seven, you know. We did enough things, too, that we played pretty damn good and should be proud of that. Whenever you lose, you're never proud of anything. And when you have some mistakes that were kind of effort-related, not getting back and things, that's going gonna, gonna to be hard to watch the film. But I've, uh, I was as proud of this team as many teams I've had that have gone far and lost because the way this team, the way they grew the last couple of weeks um, – it was fun to see happen. We'll go across the room on this side. Third row, go ahead. Um, guys took a lot of lumps this year, whether it be the injuries or that tough schedule at the beginning. And then throughout this game, a lot of lumps, down, going down uh, five, heading out of the locker room. Um, but just kept getting off the mat, uh, maybe not this game at the very end. But when you think back about the season, is, is resiliency going to be one of the, the ways to describe this team? Oh, for sure. And I don't know how many lumps, you know, we did have some injuries and we went through some things during the year, but some of the lumps, because no matter what anybody says, top to bottom, uh, you know, I, I have no problem standing up and saying we have the best league in the country. You know, when you have that number of teams uh, beating the hell out of each other every day, I don't think we're worn out from it. I just think you get a bad seed from it. So we had all these teams with seven, eight, and nine seeds. And I'm not saying that was wrong, but that's what happens when, uh, I like to see some teams come in and survive this league in the places we play. So, you know, I'm gonna become a big Badger fan. I'm gonna pull for them in the NIT. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm proud of my team, but I'm proud of the league too. And uh, disappointments, there's disappointments. But uh, I think as a seven seed, maybe we showed how good our league was instead of, like some people say, the other way around. We'll stay in that same row, two seats down. Uh, Jim Comperoni, SpartanMag.com. Tom, uh, your team gave up some back cuts. Uh, it's, it's rare to see a Michigan State team beaten to the rim. W what was going on with that? I'm sure you were trying to get it corrected as it went along. What did yeah, you I, I think two things. We got caught mesmerized on, on Noel. I mean, he, he's a special player, you know, and we actually did a pretty good job on him when you, when you look at um, he gets that last one or he would have been six for 18 as 18 points, but he's two for six from the three. It was the assist that, that really killed us on the back cuts. And I think we we're mesmerized on him. We did not do a very good job on that. That was one of the disappointments. Um, so, and that's what makes him a great player. It's not only the plays he makes, but the position he puts people in that, uh, put you on, uh, backpedaling, you know, I, I, I really was disappointed in some of those back cuts because we had really talked about him, the lob at the end. We had talked about out of a timeout. But I think we played so many guys so long, I think we just kind of wore down. You know, we got caught. Marty struggled. We got caught with our bigs. And so then we went with Malik and Joey. And um, so now we went smaller, which was okay. But we just kept playing those guys. We hardly gave Tyson and AJ much of a rest. And I, I think that hurt us a little bit too. So... Blame the coach, not the players on that. We lost a little vision, and that's what happens when you get fatigued. We'll do two more questions. We're going to start. stay on that side toward the back. Go ahead. 
Um, Coach, you know, prior to the season, there was a lot of skepticism, whether that be, um, you know, with the center spot or the non-conference schedule. Um, you know, after, despite the score of, of the game, the final result, um, all things considered, do you look back at this season and think, wow, they did pretty good, you know, looking back at everything? You know, for a guy who always thinks the glass is half empty, and I've said this many a times, for some reason I believed in this team all year long. I, I knew it wasn't just the teams we played, it's when we played them, you know, the crazy road trip to Portland and be there and come back on a Monday morning at 7.30 and leave for Notre Dame the next day, you know. I, I, I did some stupid things too in scheduling. So, um, you know, when you look back on everything, you're going to see some players tonight that didn't do their job and you're going to see a coach that, you know, that led to some of the things, uh, the injuries. Um, you know, everybody has injuries, but to have two main guys out uh, when we didn't go fishing, um, it was probably, uh, it, it'll go down as one of the great years for me, not, not a good year. It'll go down as one of the great years. Because, you know, we had our issues during the year, and, and to watch guys grow at the end and, uh, and just kind of buy in, you know, that's what happens. And when you buy in and you trust the coach and coach trusts the players, some cool things can happen. So we'll see if we can take this thing and build on it and get back to normal. You know, COVID's over. There's been a lot of stuff these classes have been through in all schools. And uh, I'm, uh, I feel better about my job. I felt better about getting through to kids. I felt better about maybe coaching them and not managing them. And uh, that's a good thing. Last question on the aisle, row three. Uh, Brennan Shabbat from WDBM Sports. Tom, you mentioned um, coaching and not managing and all the things that these guys have been through. You think of players like Joey and Malik with COVID and last season and Tyson. A lot of these guys aren't going to be here next year, stuff like that. Obviously, that's still all up in the air. But I'm just wondering, with all that in mind and what a year it's been, what did you say to some of those guys in the locker room right after? How do you deal with that emotions that they're going through in that time? Told them I was proud as hell of them, and I love every one of them. That's what I told them. And we can look at the – I can look at a million things that we did wrong. I can look at some things that we – I did wrong. Ball screen coverage strung us out. You know, then we, we went with some lineups that wasn't the normal when we had those two smalls in there. And, um, I mean, that Mashad kid really hurt us, you know, and maybe we didn't prepare for him enough. Uh, you know, so there's – there's always blame that can go for everybody, but to fight back like we did over and over, as you say, get off the mat as many times as we did, go through the things we went through, um, you feel good about them. You know, I just, I just wish, I really believed when we were three up that we were going to win that game and this team was destined. And that's what I believed all year. And yet uh, credit goes to Kansas State, so I don't want to, take any credit away from them they made bigger shots tougher shots big plays and and uh you know i don't know how many turnovers they had but that was the difference you know they've been turning over 15 times and had five we've been turning over 10 times and had 13 but it's those points off turnovers i call them turnovers for touchdowns and we had too many of those and uh that's why their shooting percentage was so high and uh so, you know, you gotta live with it. You gotta own it. And the key is now, can you learn from it? And uh, that'll be the, the challenge because uh, our league is not getting any worse. Too many damn good coaches. Um, and so next year will be another challenging year. And as you know, after we play um, musical chairs here and let all the people figure out who's going where and what's going to happen. Um, you know, we'll sit down and see uh, who we got, who we get to coach, and uh, and see if we can make a magical run on a, only a little farther than we did this year. Thanks a lot, guys. Coach, thanks. We appreciate yeah, you taking the you, time. Congratulations care. on a great season. Yeah, thanks. And that was a hell of a game. Thanks.